absolutely did not move too fast. I think that we have to step back and ask ourselves that what our responsibilities are. And our responsibilities are to serve all of our children in our state and to really focus on ensuring every single one of our children walk into a school that is able to meet their needs, is able to be successful, that the, the, ch the children, that the families, that the educators are proud of the incredible work that they are doing, and most importantly, that the children are on a path for success. And so we need to act with urgency in that environment when we have children who are struggling. I think there's some confusion, and I put myself in this camp, about where this plan comes from. Is it a mandate from the federal government? Like, for example, there is um, tension in Christina about removing the current school leaders, perhaps. Um, do you guys have to make changes there in order to fulfill those obligations to the federal government to get the funding you need? No, we make our decisions about what is best in terms of moving this, this process forward. And let's talk specifically about, about the people who are serving our children. Right, we've, we've heard some criticisms about attacks that, that were blaming teachers and those types of things. And that is absolutely not the case. But we also at the same time have to say that when we have schools that are struggling, we need to look at every aspect of the school. Everything from the program to the schedule to the budget to the educators. And I do not think it is too much to ask for, to, to take a hard look at the quality of teaching that is happening in our classrooms and the quality of leading that is happening in our schools. I want to ask about Race to the Top, something you've been involved with even before you were in this position. Back in the sort of the original application stage, there was all these ambitious goals, and they were specific. 60% uh, on, on the fourth grade math on, on the NAEP test would be proficient. Um, the latest numbers we had, I think, from 2013, are where I think we're at 42%. You can go down the list, and it's, it's a similar story. We've made gains, but not, we haven't sort of gotten close to meeting these really ambitious goals. So I guess I want to ask you, did race to the top not work as well as expected, or were these goals sort of meant to be off in the distance, almost unrealistic, unreasonable in a way. We are all committed to continuing to accelerate the achievement gains. I think it is, um, those goals are important. It is important that our children reach a, a level of proficiency where, in academics where they are ready to be successful beyond high school. And so those goals, while we have not reached all of them, we are, we are excited about the progress we're, we're making, but we're also acting with urgency to continue that progress. And we have seen progress, and we, we see it every single day in our schools, and we certainly see it year over year. And in fact, uh, a study came out last year talking about even a longer term trajectory for Delaware, and Delaware is the third fastest improving state in terms of, in terms of academic achievement over the last two decades. We've heard repeated calls to change the structure of, of how teachers are compensated in the state, the level at, what they're, at which they're compensated. Um, there was a task force, a General Assembly task force on it. Where does it stand now? I mean, I mean are, are we near to seeing some, some real movement on this? Yes, we have another meeting on Friday. So we are Good. still continuing to talk and to move forward. I think this is incredibly important for the future of the education profession. At the end of the day, what we are trying to accomplish here is we're trying to provide teachers with great compensation levels. And in some way, some of the examples are raising starting salaries. Another example is to provide them with career opportunities to allow teachers to demonstrate leadership and have leadership responsibilities and roles while staying in the classroom that a teacher doesn't have to leave the classroom and become an assistant principal in order to earn more money, that we can actually empower our educators to demonstrate leadership in their schools through responsibilities, and we can compensate them for that. This has been a, a call from the governor for, for well over a year now, and we have been working significantly on this for months. And so we continue to move forward on this, and I am very hopeful that in the next few months we will have a proposal to consider as a state. I want to end on this. Uh, just, just you personally, stepping back from the policy for, for, for a second, I want to know what your philosophy is on learning. You know, how do you get someone not just to, to, to learn a specific set of standards when they're a kindergartner, but to, to fall in love with learning so that it becomes a lifelong pursuit? Yes. Uh, it's funny, I have this uh, conversation with my children quite often. Um, I have a, a seventh grader and a senior in high school and um, one of the things that we talk about as a, as a core element is that our children have to have a sense of self-efficacy. They have to believe that, that you get smart through hard work 
and you get smart through effective effort. You're not born smart, you get smart. And that's all about a, a growth mindset. That they, that they believe that they can grow, that they can improve, that they can put forth that effort. And so learning starts there. If a child doesn't believe that they can learn and that they can make progress, then, then, then we're, we're not at a good starting line. Well, Secretary Murphy, I want to thank you so much for joining us and uh, look forward to uh, following you in the future. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for the opportunity.